Over the past few years, we have seen surgeons carry out the first hand transplant, womb transplant, and of course, we've seen face transplants. But now one doctor is planning on making history by performing the world's first ever head transplant. Yep, you heard correctly, a head transplant, the full head. Well, the biggest uh, issue with head transplants is just the intricacy between connecting one person's spinal cord to another person's spinal cord. It is the most complicated structure uh, that exists at that connection between the head and the rest of the body. The major structures that one would uh, absolutely have to put back together with the uh, uh, recipient, uh, one would be the trachea. So this is the cross-section of the trachea. The surgeon planning this operation says it'll take around 150 medical staff 36 hours to complete. The first step is to freeze the head and body in order to stop the brain cells from dying. When you call a patient to that lower temperature, you do cause the cells to slow down, but the rewarming or the thawing from that cooling can be potentially dangerous to those same cells. The neck will then be cut and the tubes connecting the key arteries and veins fitted. The most important of two blood vessels in the neck, this is the internal carotid artery and we see its counterpart here. And both of these vessels are uh, arising uh, from the common carotid and go up and supply the brain with uh, two thirds of the blood supply that the brain needs to stay viable. So uh, the left and right internal carotids uh, absolutely have to be uh, anastomosed uh, with one another. The next step will be the biggest challenge. Now this is cutting the spinal cord and doctors will be using an extremely fine blade made from diamond to minimize the damage here. Some people have uh, already disconnected and reconnected spinal cords of animals such as uh, mice, um, but this has never been done in a human. This is the sac that holds the spinal cord. This is the cervical vertebra. The spinal cord is here, so not only uh, does the dura mater or the, the watertight sac that it lives in have to be cut and re-anastomosed circumferentially, um, but also the cord has to be laid um, very close by to its uh, severed section that it's trying to grow back to. If you think about what has to happen to transplant one person's head to another person's body, it requires spinal cord trauma. Combine that with not only disconnect connecting one spinal cord to another person's spinal cord, but connecting all the blood vessels and other nerves that are in someone's neck uh, that would um, be required for a connection, for example, the vagus nerve, uh, would be uh, a monumentous task and we don't have the technology to perform that procedure. The head will then be moved from the donor body and the spinal cords will be fused together using a special type of glue. Now once all that is in place, it is a race against time to reattach all the remaining muscles, veins and the organs like the esophagus. One has to um, disconnect and reconnect the trachea or the breathing tube. Uh, that is a, a sizable um, surgery in itself as is uh, reconnecting the entirety of the esophagus and then hoping that the innervation of those structures, those have to uh, be cut and one has to wait on those to uh, either regrow or not regrow and the complications that ensue after that. The spine itself from a structural standpoint would have to be uh, fused um, to the head in some way or uh, mechanically allotted together so that the, uh, the tissues didn't uh, move around. We can't have a spinal cord that moves around. Uh, so that would uh, add to the surgical time. Think about the teams involved, not only neurosurgeons most likely, general surgeons and plastic surgeons all being involved in this small area of space. Uh, it appears that that is uh, not going to happen in an hour. Once the skin is stitched together by a plastic surgeon, the patient will be kept in an induced coma for four weeks to allow everything to heal. It really is an extremely intricate procedure. It would be remiss of us not to um, mention some of the ethical uh, concerns. Um, the surgeon that's interested in performing this surgery has not only struggled to find uh, patients that are willing to undergo the procedure, but also uh, hospitals or, or countries that believe it's even ethical to do the surgery in the first place. Well, aside from uh, there being very little scientific support for the actual efficacy and success rate of the procedure, uh, there is a patient element and what patient uh, would want to subject themselves to such a procedure. And it was said by some members of the neurosurgical community there are some things that are even worse than death itself um, and that has certainly been raised as a concern uh, with this procedure that um, it may be a cruel and inhumane 
uh, thing to do to a patient. Um, and I think it's important that we uh, always keep, keep those sorts of questions in mind, even if uh, the science is exciting, of course. The hurdles are so vast and of such high magnitude that a, head, a headless person is one of those um, things that is beyond the horizon of science at this point.